Hi. For this particular problem, <clears throat> we're going to look at um, optimization where we have to craft the equation that we're looking for and then use that equation to find optimal area in this case. So if I read over the problem, what's happening is I have this piece of wire that's 20 centimeters in length, so I drew a 20 centimeter length wire. I'm going to form an isosceles triangle out of it. So I just need to understand what that might look like. So I drew out three different examples of a 20 centimeter wire where we have uh, <laughs> folding into an equilateral triangle. So I can make 9 and 9 uses up 18 centimeters to get two sides the same, and I have 2 centimeters left over for the base. Could go 7 and 7, which is 14, leaving me 6 centimeters left over for the base. Could go 6 and 6, which leaves me 8 centimeters left over for the base. So here's just three of the infinite ways that I could fold this triangle, or this wire, into an isosceles triangle. That could be generalized using the idea that two sides will be the same, call them A and A, and the other side will be unlike the other two, we'll call that one B for base. Now, what I have to do is I have to figure out the area in terms of the base. So B representing the base of the triangle, that's what it says, base B, and uh, this is the formula which will give you the area. Now, I'm not sure how to do that, but what I do know is if I have an isosceles triangle, I can find the area. I first need to find the height itself. The height cuts the isosceles triangle into two equal or, uh, right triangles, where the hypotenuse is in this case 9, and the base, half of that, makes up the base of the right triangle. So we could say 1 squared plus h squared equals 9 squared. Solving for h, we get the square root of 9 squared minus 1 squared. Therefore, we can say that the area equals half base times height. We just solved for height. Cleaning it all up, we get the square root of 80. I just did the same calculations over and yeah, uh, that is I dropped an altitude so I split this into two equal right triangles. To find the height I use half the base, 3 squared, plus h squared equals 7 squared. Solving for h gives me a height of the square root of 40. Area then equals half base times height, the base was 6, the height we just solved for, and this becomes 3 times the square root of 40. And by the way, as a reminder, some of the skills that we could have from Algebra 2, you can break down 3 square root of 40 into 6 square root of 10. If you don't remember how, please ask. Square root of 80 could be written as 4 square roots of 5. I don't need to do another example because what I understand about math at this point is if I do the work in general, I'll create a formula which will produce the area um, in terms of B, which is apparently what I'm supposed to be doing right here. So to begin, I'm going to take half the base to get this side of the right triangle, I'm going to take h, which is the height of the triangle that I'm looking for, and a, which is the length of the hypotenuse of that little right triangle, and solve for h. And here I should fix this. I solved for h, not h squared. So there's that. Anyway, in so doing, uh, since h is the square root of a squared minus 1 quarter b squared, I can calculate the area as half base times height. Now as you can see there's two things wrong. Number one, it doesn't look like the area over here. Number two, I have too many variables. There's an A and a B and an area. Uh, three variables in one equation makes for three-dimensional graphs and we're not ready for that. So what I'm going to do is recall that there is a 20 centimeter piece of wire. And what that means is the perimeter of every triangle that I make, no matter how big or small, is always going to have the same perimeter of 20 centimeters because they were all made with the same 20 centimeter piece of wire. So that gives me the fact that A plus A plus B equals 20, which with a little cosmetics, I get 2A equals 20 minus B, or A is just 10 minus half of B. Now what I've done is I've taken my area formula and I've expressed A in terms of B. Everywhere I see an A, I replace it with 10 minus half of B. And the rest is mathematical cosmetics. I foil that out and I end up with a formula that's exactly like the formula that I needed to, to find over here. And just to prove that all my thinking is valid here, I just had when the base was 6, I ended up with an area of 6 square root of 10 or 3 square root of 40. And my formula says if the base is 6, we take half of 6 to get to 3, and then 100 minus 60, which is 40. Uh, so my formula is consistent with the work I did over here, so I know I showed what I needed to show. Second part of the question is asking uh, to us to show that the triangle that has the largest possible area is when the triangle is equilateral. 
we're looking for largest possible area, which basically means we're trying to optimize the area, maximize the area in this case, which is going to involve derivatives. But I mentioned in class, and I'll mention it again here, that when we're working with optimization, we're just trying to find where the tangent is horizontal, that is where the maximum is going to occur. We can do that whether we are optimizing A or optimizing A squared. It just turns out that optimizing A squared is going to make my mathematics far easier. Squaring b over 2 gives me b squared over 4. Squaring the square root of this is this. <laughs> and then I distribute the b squared over 4, and I get this result. It's nice polynomial, very easy to differentiate, so I did so. And then to optimize, I find out when the first derivative equals 0. There's some Algebra 2 work in there. And I find that either b equals 0, which should give us a minimum. Logically speaking, if the base were 0, we would just have a 10 by 10 wire. It doesn't produce a triangle with any area. So here we have 10 minus 3 halves b, which is the other factor equaling 0. Using the zero product principle, I solve for b equals 20 thirds. Just to make sure that that's where the maximum occurs, even though it should be obvious and intuitive, um, I took the second derivative because it's so easy to do. I took the second derivative and evaluated at 20 over 3. I got a negative number, which means the curve is concave down, which means indeed I have found a maximum. Now, just to go over here, uh, and just for fun, I'm actually recognizing that 20 over 3 is literally a third of the length of the wire, which means this would be the other two-thirds, 20 over 3, 20 over 3, which is, in fact, an equilateral triangle. I can find the total area, but this was a non-calculator problem, so I just found the total area manually. But I also did make sure that everything was copacetic by putting the equation that I found, or that was given to me actually, into the, the computer software, and I find the maximum is at 6.667, which is 8 or 20 thirds, and uh, I find that these two numbers do match up as well. So everything is consistent with what I thought it would be, and uh, yeah. Now before I finish up and round out this particular video, I would like to point out that right here, I use a technique. This technique only works for optimization. If you're looking for a maximum or a minimum, then go ahead and square the function and make it easier to differentiate, and whatever result you get will be the correct result. Just to show you or to demonstrate this, um, I decided to take the derivative of this function without squaring it, and that requires the product rule. So here you can see the product rule unfolding. And then I have to use the product rule right, keeping in mind there's a double chain rule going on up in here. So once I do all that, then I do some mathematical cosmetics. I factor out the lowest common term, collect like terms, and I get this whole mess. And then I set the numerator equal to 0 to optimize, and I get the same result, b equals 20 thirds. I assure you I would rather not do this. If I can avoid it, I will. You can compare the calculus uh, to what I did in the previous slide. Uh, the calculus is far more simple and, and elegant by squaring first. So just realize that that's a tool. You can use the tool, or you can slog it out the old-fashioned way if you want to, uh, but just making you aware of what's out there for you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.